What is peace? Welcome to Philosopher's Corner. I'm John, and today we're going to discuss peace. Always a relevant topic. Always a topic of great inquiry. But what is it from a philosophical perspective? Is peace simply the lack of hostility? Is it simply the lack of violent activities? Or is it something more? Or is it something more profound? Many people find peace through ignorance. The old saying, ignorance is bliss. And that is true. People do find peace by simply sticking their head in the sand and not paying attention to anything. But it is rare, actually. Us, being philosophers, we're more interested in the examined life version of peace. And what constitutes peace when you become aware of life, when you become conscious, when you start processing it, when you start thinking about it, and then when you start deeply feeling it. That's the type of peace that I'm interested in today. And hopefully it's the type of peace that you're also interested in today. Now, as with any other philosophical topic, when we open up the bag of what is, there's no turning back. <laughs> and in this case, peace affects everything in that bag. Whether you call it Pandora's box or the Garden of Eden, that moment before you know things, that moment before you examine something, Well, in that moment, you don't know what you don't know. But when we open it up and we start to look at even one small single thing, that initial piece of ignorance is eternally disrupted. And we're all there. So let's look into it. In that bag is anything that exists. And since this is philosophical, we're mainly intellectualizing at this point any of those things. And in this case, any of those things is a particular concept, an issue, a way to view something, and it doesn't matter what it is. And whenever we pick a thing to look at, a thing to examine, we will find immediately that that thing has, at a minimum, two sides. Everything has a polarity. That's just the way this particular reality works. It has a yes and a no, black and a white, a this and a that, and that's your issue. So it's hot or cold, it's yes or no, it's whatever, right? And whatever the issue is or the principle that comes up for examination, is going to have, at a minimum, the side you're familiar with, and then the polar opposite. The idea being that things happen in the positive and they happen in the negative. They happen in the balance and the counterbalance, right? And so when we start to realize that anything can be examined in this light, we start to create preferences. We start to create biases. We start to choose ends of each of those issues, whatever they may be. We start to choose ends of the situations, the principles, the concepts, right? And when we do that, we tip the balance of those things. Now, tipping the balance of things isn't necessarily a bad thing on individual issues especially. You may say, oh, well, you know, I wanna, I wanna earn a living. Okay, well, you know, earn a living and not earn a living. Earn a living goes up and, you know, not earn a living goes away. Well, it seems to be, you know, it would seem that that's out of balance, but it's productive out of balance, right? And when we parse out the issues in our lives, 
especially in the conscious area of our life where we're giving thoughtful examination to the issues we care about, we can see our preferences played out in the balancing of the issues and which polarity we prefer, you know? And in some cases, polarities in which we don't prefer, but we still insist on having to choose. And this is where we start to really get into what constitutes peace. On the surface of it, it sounds as though it's a very easy thing. You figure out what are the things that affect you, what are the things that you're aware of, you choose the right side of the issue or the preferable side of it to yourself and you attempt to keep it in balance and then you have an aggregation, an aggregate of all of these things that are important to you. Now right off the bat, you know that us as humans have a particular field of focus. It can, it's fairly narrow in relation to what exists and that is what our consciousness and our conscious issues are. Which means that there's a gazillion ones outside of it. It also means that the ones that we're choosing, we have an inborn confidence that if we become aware and conscious of issues, and they're issues that we hold near and dear to our heart, that, we ha that we're working with all the relevant facts, all the pertinent information, which is almost never the case. <laughs> so we're very confidently making relatively uninformed decisions on a host of topics that are very important to us. That's, that's for starters. And then secondly, we're assuming that we're making, even without all the pertinent information, we're assuming that we're making our choices in our best interest, out of self-interest, which we assume is the default setting in our thought process, which is also totally false. We are under the guidance of inherited DNA. We are under the momentum of ancestral inertia. We are under the momentum of institutions that are constantly attempting to make us feel as though, or think as though, we're making our own unbiased decisions and our own self-interest, when in fact we're not. When in fact, we have been inculcated in other people's value systems and we are now choosing for them under the guise of choosing for ourselves. Now very quickly you realize that these balancing that we think we're doing, we think we're seeing the thing, we think we're trying to keep it in balance, or even if we're not in balance, we're like, well, we can balance this with this, with this, with this. The, the idea being somewhere in our minds that peace is the aggregate of all of these sort of issues and topics and awarenesses and that they come, when they're aggregated in their whole, that they come to some sort of overall relative balance. That being sort of the idea, the general idea of, of peace in a person. That all of the, sum, the summarization of all of our choices, good, bad, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, da, 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 and then eventually, <clears throat> sort of like on the personal scale of justice almost, it comes into an area where it's like, sort of level and that in that in that moment if we can maintain it then then that is where peace is to be found but that ignores all of the biases and all the inculcations and all of the value systems that have been put into our field that we're unaware of for one it doesn't account for all of the lack of information with which we're making our choices for two and it certainly does not incorporate all of the things outside of our field of attention which are numerous and far outpopulate what we're conscious of they still count they still count in our balance in our balance of peace all those things we're not aware of still affect us and that's another part so a person can very sincerely very authentically very confidently and completely incorrectly stack all of these things and present themselves to the world as though they have peace. Because they have very confidently and very incorrectly done these calculations internally, if they have at all. A lot of people don't. 
but if they have, and they can very incorrectly arrive at a very confident and dangerous presumption that they have found peace without a thorough examination of any of the factors I just listed. Clearly true peace comes in with the pertinent assessment and analysis of all of these balances with as much information as possible that's relevant to achieving the true objective balance of these issues internally and making conscious the unconscious of all of the relevant unconscious factors to our conscious state. Which seems to be one of the chief benefits of going into therapy or transcendental meditation or any sort of shadow work is that is a process of making the unconscious conscious. I'll do, I'll do another video about the conscious and the unconscious because it's exceptionally important. But in this case, having made, having made and been open to unconscious factors that are still relevant to you that you're unaware of come in and bringing those into the consciousness and then allowing the balance of the truth of these conglomerate issues inside you to come into play, there seems to be a harmonization of all of the well-balanced issues and principles inside oneself that occurs. If one can, if one can get to that point of thoroughly examining pertinent issues, information, balances, I recommend putting them in, always putting them in relation to the universal frequency, the natural resonance of the universe. And by doing so, the balance of those things typically becomes apparent rather quickly. I like, when it comes to stuff on earth, I like to just assume, hey, how does this look like if, if I was hanging out in a, you know, the Starship Enterprise or an alien UFO, same thing, and I was looking down on Earth, you know, how would these issues look from an alien perspective, impartially, objectively, unbiased? Universal frequency does, I think, a little better job, but, you know, a little more down to Earth. Let's get in the UFO and look at it from low Earth orbit. I'm like, okay, how does that look? And typically, the balance of things will become apparent. From that perspective. Now, that's not to say you gotta be perfect balance about every single thing. Um, it's not I mean to say it's necessarily attainable, except for maybe a few, you know, really ascended masters. Uh, but in terms of the philosophical analysis of these things, I believe it's a good way to start to find the peace, because all peace begins internally. All peace begins external. Like uh, the world. The world's the world. To try to find peace in the world, aside from human interaction or aside from animal interaction, just to say, let's say the earth is what the earth is, but there's no like, uh, you know, humans or animals on it. There's still like plants and stuff. It's still, you know, is it at peace? Like depending on how you examine, like, you know, there's still wind blowing, ocean currents and waves and, you know, it's in an equilibrium, but it's not in a stasis, like, you know, it's in a stasis in terms of the ecosystem being at an efficient level, but it's not in like electrostatic stasis where it's frozen like zero Kelvin, right? So even within these parameters, you gotta say, well, what is peace in that regard, right? So we have this idea of internal peace being these like aggregate balances of things that do, that then do produce a feeling and a clarity in the person that allows them to maintain a centeredness about their person and their emotional field. And it brings about a fountain of well-being. Because the trick to internal peace is that once you have achieved these balances, the energies and frequencies can flow through you in a way where because if you've achieved peace, you're being less judgmental about things because you've already made the objective judgments about them and made corrections within yourself and you can feel it. 
the practitioner can feel the balance. You can feel the energy flowing through, and the energy wants to go through balanced things. And so, as this feeling emanates through you and goes through the world, it becomes very apparent who has peace, who has achieved it. And it's it's a deep it's a deep feeling. It's come from a deep wellspring. And conversely, when you've achieved that, small ripples in the piece are also very apparent. Apparent to you, the practitioner, and the people outside the practitioner. Because the waves emanate out of you. Because now, when you've achieved peace, you, become, you can become a vessel for the universe to work through. With this oversight. <laughs> the tedious, tedious oversight that it takes. The tedious introspection it takes to examine these issues, these principles, and find the balances in these issues. You know, sometimes you gotta clean them up, sometimes you gotta adjust your attitude, and you know, and sometimes you get a lot of them right out of the gate. It happens, you know, some people are wholesome and healthy and it's all good, and, and you know, this isn't original sin, this is, you know, we go through life and we take, we take damage. And some of us get brainwashed. And sometimes the winds don't blow our ways. And that is where we need to get centered the most. And, if life, if self-management is a goal of finding inner peace and finding inner balance, then we can see that these different external factors actually at first might be aggravating and feel like they're blowing us off course, but in the long run, we find that that's how we can find if we have our inner peace because then we can still maintain our center core and then navigate through it. And it acts like an outside self-check. So in terms of the inner peace, finding these aggregate balances through examination and comparison to universal frequency is very helpful and very utilitarian, not just intellectually, but for our heart, for our mind, our mind, our body, soul, whole person system, it helps. And then when we emanate, then we can look around and go, okay, what's going on here externally? And externally, external lack of peace is very easy to recognize. The disharmony is apparent very quickly. And people will want to say, oh, well, you know, external peace, well, then you gotta like, meet, ex you have to meet external disharmony with external force to reset the harmony. Well, you can use external force to create a cessation of, uh, from hostility or imbalance, but ultimately, for balance to truly be restored, it has to be lived out internally. So although it'd be nice to think that you can fight force with force and get people to calm down, that's just simply incorrect. All that can do is buy you time for people to do the internal work. And when the internal peace comes in a collectivist manner or in a whatever closed system you happen to be in, a semi-closed system, then a true living external peace can start to fruit and bloom and blossom but it all comes from the internal examination of these issues and principles and concepts that we all have in each other and then try to balance them bit by bit and when we think we have it look at the whole person balance it from that perspective and then obviously that's when the reality and you know when I say reality it includes everybody it includes other human beings it includes animals it includes the metaphysical aspect of the reflexive nature of reality itself the reality will interact with you more once you have peace and when you do it becomes very enlightening because it becomes like a very deep soul mirror a life mirror and you will find that wherever you go it will act much more reflexively with you and that will be your guide and then you then when you've achieved peace, then you can really, really navigate with life instead of like life being this thing that's always a, a put upon you. It can really, really, you really get into the stream of life and, it, and you know how to navigate it when you're being real with it. And it all comes from finding peace. And everything calibrates from true peace. And once you have true peace and you've calibrated it and you've validated it with the reality, you're there. So, hope you found this helpful. Uh, peace. Let's all find it. Have a great day, everybody.